Hey guys, Chris from Provo B Saudi Installation, and today we're doing a subwoofer install on this 2008 Honda Ridgeline. In this install, we're going to show you how to mount and install an amplifier and hook up two 10 inch subs underneath the rear seats. Now, we're going to be integrating this into the factory radio. We do not have an aftermarket radio with pre outs, so I'll also include showing you how to hook up a line out converter. Let's go ahead and get started. Now some of the parts that we're using in this install, we're doing two of these Rockford Fosgate Prime 10 inch subwoofers. Um, we went with dual 2 ohm models, so we can wire each sub in series up to 4 ohms and then wire both subs together back down to a 2 ohm lead for the amplifier that we've chosen. Now we're going with this Pioneer GMD 8601, uh, new concepts, uh, 4 gauge wiring kit and the Pack Audio SNI 35 line-out converter. Um, we already have the subwoofers mounted, both of them, in the box, and we'll show you once we get to that point as we get those hooked up. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna run this power wire from our amplifier wiring kit from the battery area through the inline fuse supplied with the wiring kit through the firewall into the cabin of the truck um, and then to the amplifier. Provo Beats Audio Installation Channel is sponsored by NVX and Sonic Electronics. Get 10% off all speakers, amplifiers, wiring kits, and more with coupon code PBAI at NVX. Also get 5% off all car audio components at Sonic Electronics with coupon code PROVOBEAST. Now the area we've chosen to mount the amplifiers underneath the driver's front seat. Now sometimes if you have the premium audio, um, in the pilot version you'll have um, possibly a subwoofer underneath the seat. Uh, obviously the ridge line doesn't and it's typically located in the back anyways. Um, we have here plenty of space to mount our amplifier and uh, plenty of airflow, which is perfect. And it's also easy to get to in case we have to service it. So we're gonna go ahead and actually just remove bolts on all four corners. We've already removed our um, panel covers here. But that allows us just to tip the seat back so we have enough access to go ahead and get our wires ran for the amplifier. Now here in the back, here's the box that we've gone with. We picked this up on Amazon here. If we tip this back here, we have both our Rockford Fosgates already mounted within here. These are the ones that you saw the box on the bench. So we go up underneath here, we can see that rubber grommet. Um, so we're going to go try to find a similar area inside up underneath the steering column to have firewall access to run our power wire through. That's the set we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, power wire to and we're going to run an inline fuse as well. Now we finished up underneath the hood. Remember we ran our power wire through that grommet. I followed along the factory wiring here and then we put our inline fuse. We just mounted it on the outside of this battery, kind of the shroud area, so it's nice and solid. And then, we haven't put it on yet, but once we're ready, we're gonna connect our power wire to that stud. So up underneath the hood is good to go. We try to get our fuse as close to the battery as possible, with the shortest run between the fuse and the positive post. Okay, so we ran that power wire just up underneath. Now there's actually factory loom that runs underneath that vent. So we ran our wiring up with it up underneath that factory vent. And uh, we're going up right here, up underneath the panel. Now the nice thing is there are some bolts here in this nice solid piece of metal that are threaded. And what we're gonna do is actually pull one of them out, clean up the threads. Um, clean up the actual contact and use a ring terminal and ground our amplifier there. So running our power and ground, we ran it here as well. So we're going to go ahead and get that prepped, get a ring terminal on here and get it grounded. Okay, those are two 10 millimeter bolts. One here and one right there. What we did is pull those out. Now we use the wire brush here on our drill. Cleaned up that paint really, really well. So there's no resistance between the frame here and our amplifier. So at this point, let's get a ring terminal on and get this bolted back in. 
um, using the 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so we've got our power and ground run. Went ahead then and put the bracket back in. And as you can see, we got our ground nice and tidied up there. Um, remember everything's all the, um, all the corrosion, all the paint's all been cleaned off, so we have a really good connection. It's not going anywhere. Um, since I was up underneath here, I started running our speaker wire, and again up underneath, and then we went straight back to the subwoofers, just under this panel, back the other direction, and we got those plugged in. We'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. At this point, let's go ahead and um, run our RCAs, our remote turn-on wire, and our base knob wire from this area. We're gonna to head towards the center console. Already kind of popped that panel off, just those three clips here, hold it on, and that came out. So I'm gonna run wires up through that center console up underneath the carpet. Then we're gonna work our way up. Okay, so we've got our positive and negative hooked up. We need to do a little vacuum, obviously. Got our speaker wire hooked up. Now we gotta be careful when we put the seat back down with that we don't pinch wires here, but Everything will fold away nicely. Then on this end, we got our RCAs and our base knob wire. Fed those up underneath this direction. And then this carpet here is actually pretty easy to pull out. You just work on it by pulling this. And it goes right on out so we can run, run our wire from up here and it come out to this point. So we're gonna probably mount our base knob somewhere down here out of the way and then we'll continue to run our RCAs and our remote turn on wire up to behind the radio area. So you can use a line out converter and tap in safely behind the radio for our signal and our remote turn on. All right, so since we have our amplifier our hull hooked up, we're safe now at this point to go ahead and put the positive on the battery. We are done underneath the hood. All right, so we mounted our amplifier and the way that we did it, we actually have a piece this is just for example of 12 by 12 ABS plastic at 16th inch. And we cut it down the side, so here's the remaining piece, and slid it up underneath the carpet. And so we had something sturdy to mount it to. The carpet is actually sandwiched between the piece of ABS and the amp, so it's not going anywhere. So we can't bump it, or it's not going anywhere, and it's not screwed into the vent either, so we have plenty of space. Okay, at this point, we need to actually just pop the radio out temporarily. So we can go ahead and tap into the um, the front speaker output as well as the ignition wire, just so we can have a remote turn on and signal for our amp. So we need to get in here. And essentially here to get in, it's this whole bezel up and around the radio just needs to come on out and around the dash cluster. <clears throat> Let's get started here. You can use the panel tool to help kind of pop. Lots of harnesses, depending on the tr depending on the trim level that you have, you may have just a few, or you may have a lot. So I, there's a harness here, 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 two more up here on the left side of the gauge cluster, and two more down here in the pocket. Now, with that all out of the way, we can just pop our four screws out. Once those are out, that gives us access to the main harness. From there, we're just going to strip the wires back and solder into the the front outputs. Okay, just enough out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and pull back the tape over the connections to expose the wire that we need to tap into. Okay, so we disconnected our harnesses. Now, before you disconnect your harness, make sure you have your radio code, because you'll require it on these. So, we made five connections. Connection one, our remote turn on wire is um, yellow with the red stripe. So we tapped in a remote turn on wire there and we'll tape that up. Then our four speaker wires that we'll need. Um, starting on the left hand side, our positive is light green, negative is violet for the left front speaker. 
and then our um, right front speaker positive is blue negative is red so we'll tape those connections up and then reloom the harness and then this end plugs into our RCAs now these are grounds in case you have a ground loop issue or noise you can hook these up um, f generally for subs if you have a great ground on the amplifier you shouldn't have an issue um, but these are optional we're gonna clean up our harness get it plugged back in and now typically your radio code if you need it is right there if you have that sticker in the glove box so make sure you reference that um, and then we're gonna reinstall the stereo okay so we reinstalled our harness we taped up with um, electrical tape our connections and then use Tessa tape just to cover the, the connections in general we hooked up our line out converter we bundled the extra RCAs and we're gonna tuck them back here in the dash we tested it, it actually works, boots up fine. We have plenty of bass. At this point, let's go ahead and reinstall the radio and put the dash bezel back on. Okay, radio's all reassembled. Good to go. Remember your code. Got the code in, everything's working great. We just need to clean up our wire down here, mount our bass knob, tune our amplifier, put the seat back down, and that's it. Okay, I'll put back together. That's about it. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and post a comment below. Um, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.